Hey everyone. Yeah, I told you I'd be back to do a more simplified, shortened, hopefully shortened version of my live stream review on the season 8 finale, uh, School Rays. And that's what I'm here to try to, you know, try to do. Just checking something here, folks. Okay. Checking where my why I have to look straight at, you know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, basically, overall, as I said in this live stream, and I do apologize if I rambled, if I felt like I narrated, or if it felt like I was narrati narrating what was going on, um, that, you know, it wasn't my intention to do it that way, but that's just how I am. You take a look at the reaction videos you get later on, though, like from Brony's React and the Analysis Reacts, they're very similar, but not totally. But like, oh, but overall, like I said, um, I, I thought the finale was was good. I thought it was decent. Um, I know a lot of people are going to find certain things underwhelming and controversial. In fact, the one thing people are going to find controversial, and it's a bit of spoilers. You're going to have some in here anyway is the resolution for Cozy Glow. Now, pretty much everybody from Dawelsonator, Despio, to Anthropony, Map, Dr. Wolf, uh, anybody that's done a review, Cartoon Gentleman, anybody that's done a review on camera, on YouTube, Daily Motion, uh, Stardust, the Stardust app, uh, MLP form is a question daily Facebook Twitter you name it anybody that's done a review has pretty much all said the same thing the moment you saw cozy glow debut in March for effort the way she was portrayed pretty much told you something was up about this character and as we got into later as we got into the later half of the season and like I said as we got into the second half of this season uh, pretty much it was confirmed that something was not right about this character and we get that here in the finale because we find out that her ultimate goal is to become the Empress of friendship if not if not above all the Empress of Equestria and the way she implant and the way she plans to do it is to not is by not only draining the magic all of the magic out of Equestria, you know, but to also use friendship as her motivation, as her reasoning, as her reasoning and motivation and rise to power, because she pretty much says it in the in the closing moments of the finale, when she basically tells you know, Twilight, almost similarly what she had told Starlight at the end of part one. And that is, friendship is power. So basically, her method for her rise to power is, hey, if I'm the head mayor of the School of Friendship, I'm going to get all the friends on my side, I'm going to get all these ponies and creatures on my side, and thus, that's the first step, because the next step would be, do the same thing throughout Equestria, and thus become empress as a result. Basically, Cozy Glow is depicted as a character that learned what she had to, but misinterpreted it. And it's almost like, and I didn't say this in the live stream, but it's almost like she looks at Twilight, and when she explains the reasoning for her motives uh, to Twilight, it's almost like in her own subtle way, she's trying to tell Twilight, hey, you're the princess of friendship. You have all these ponies flocking to you to be friends because you're the princess of friendship. Why don't you use that to take control and rule Equestria? That's basically what you get there. That's kind of like a subtle... I mean, because again, like I said, the way Cozy Glow explains her motives it's almost a very subtle way of her telling Twilight, Hey, you're the princess of friendship. Why don't you use that to take control? Because basically, she tells Twilight, 
you know, you're the princess of friendship, but as the head mayor here, I can have more friends than you. Or something like that. And, you know, but, but and the way they had her worded, though, was, like I said, you could look at it as a very subtle jab at, is her basically, Cozy Glow taking a subtle jab at Twilight, saying that, you know, saying, hey, look, you created this school. You're the princess of friendship. You're the head mayor. Why don't you utilize that to take control? Like I'm going to, like my plan was to. I mean, when you think. I mean, when you think about it, her plan was very ingenious. You know, drain the magic out of Equestria, lure, 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 lure away, or yeah, lure, lure away, easy for me to say, uh, lure away the only threat, one of the only threats you have to your rise to power, Trap the other threat in some kind of encasement as, I guess, a backup plan to get her out of the way. And then go from there. The only thing that Cozy Glow didn't really count on, but she was able to work it into her plans, was Naysay's arrival. But again, this is where a lot of people actually do like Cozy Glow. Because here's a villain... That basically lives up to what her cutie mark represents. Her cutie mark is a rook, a chest rook. And everybody knows that if you have some kind of... And everybody knows you have to be a master playing a chess game to be a winner. You have to be a master strategist. And that's what her rook represents. Her being a master strategist and always seemingly staying a step ahead even if, it's, even if she has to improvise at the last moment. Or within the moment. And that's what she does. So her comeuppance at the end. Has gone to a lot of controversy. Because it's like well wait a minute. Here you had these other characters. Like Starlight doing what she did with her village. Illage. And then in the premiere as well. As what she did in the season. In the season 5 premiere. And then what she did in the season 5 finale. And yet she's let off scot free. And given a second chance at friendship and redemption. Same goes as Tempest Shadow. Tempest Shadow in the movie pretty much enslaved Cantalot, turned three of the princesses into stone, you know, gave the magic of the princesses to the Storm King who was unstable himself, and yet she's given a second chance at life and friendship, and all because of why? Because Twilight saved her after the Storm King basically betrayed her? And the fact that she sacrificed herself else to save them. Okay. So, you know, some people argue the fact that, you know, they did, that these two characters did something, you know, as, did something even more, how do I put it, more diabolical. Oh, more, diabol more diabolical or just as diabolical as what Cozy did. And yet, unlike them, Cozy is sent to basically Pony Alcatraz or Pony Hell. And that being Tartarus, while the other two are given are basically let off scot-free. And is that a controversial decision that they made? Absolutely, there's no doubt. But, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Did... Tempest attempt murder. Yes. But she did it to characters that were not ponies. That was the pirates and Capper. But they survived. Did she attempt murder on the princesses? Not necessarily. She petrified them to basically drain the magic out of them. And then maybe when it was all said and done, restore them but without their magic. So... Yeah, does she do some things that are worthy of her being in Tartarus? Absolutely. Same with Starlight. But, here's the thing. Unlike Cozy Glow, they were given backstories as to why they, were, why they became the way they were. 
Tempest's was even further detailed in several books tying into the movie. Cozy is a filly, basically a teenager, a preteen if you will, that whose backstory hasn't even really begun. And a lot of people still debate whether or not she is a filly at all. That maybe she looks like a filly, but she could be a different creature entirely that's pony-like, but is more demon-like or whatever. I mean, when you listen to what she has to say to, to Starlight at the end of part one, she says, you ponies. That right there should be the first hint that, okay, this is no ordinary filly. There's something up about this character. So, you know, overall though, so overall, depending on how you feel about, you know, the repercussions that she suffered or that she got, basically the, the sentence that she got in Tartarus, you know, whether you agree with it or you don't, Cozy Glow was indeed one of the better villains they've had, had in a long time. And in fact, a lot of people have agreed that she's the kind of villain that you need in this kind of a situation. That, like I said is able to improvise even in the even in the moment. Now overall for the rest of the the finale it was all right like I said. As I said in the stream the second to third half of part one started to pick up and then it really picked up in part two of the finale as well. I mean just the the acting I mean just the moments and scenes alone were worth it. I mean <laughs> Even at the beginning of part one, you had some good comedic moments, like, like you know, Starlight throwing a little sarcasm towards Twilight, when Twilight at first thinking, well, when she first asked uh, Starlight, well, did you cast a spell right? And Starlight giving her that look like, seriously, you're going to ask me that? You know me better than that. And then when Twilight tries to levitate a book to probably see if the spell was cast right, you know, the book ends up dropping, not not intentionally, but unintentionally, because Twilight didn't mean for that to happen, and Starlight throwing the same same back at her. That was a funny moment. Rarity coming in, you know, expl you know, crying and everything, saying her magic's gone, showing how uh, because of that she had to brush her mane with her hoof, and how not her mane but her tail with her hoof, and how messed up that was. The fact that he, even the magic draining was affecting Spike to the point that Rarity had to stomp on him with a hoof to do like a Heimlich to get the message out. And if that's not enough, when they go to that emergency meeting and they find out what's going on, the reaction both Pinky and Rarity have towards Twilight, it's like some of the best moments you're going to see. I mean, Pinky being like, oh, wait a minute, you're talking about that red guy the second I'm magic? And they go, oh, oh, all right, I get it. And then Rarity's reaction after Twilight basically says, hey, they'll go to Tartarus and see what's up. Rarity approaches her and says, oh, no, 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 no. No, you're not going anywhere without your, whoa. It's like the realization of what Twilight just said just hit her. Because Twilight, in continuity with what happened with the movie, finally realized that she can depend on her friends to be there for her. Which is a great callback to the movie, because if you remember in the movie, she wasn't doing that. But overall, with all that, and then what happened later on in the second half, you know, you know, with the fact that, you know, this, I mean, the student six, I mean, here's, again, here's what I liked about the student six. Six, and I'm going to say it right out. I loved how Gallus and Smolder were kind of like suspicious about something right, at the, right off the bat. When it was Cozy Glow that was, um, at, you know, talking at this assembly and not Starlight Glimmer. It's like they knew something was up. And pretty much this is confirmed at the end of part one and then more confirmed in part two. So, again, overall, um, a good story. You know, some might say, well, the CM... Now, some might say the CMC's role was kind of wasted. I wouldn't say it was totally wasted, 
because they did try to distract uh, Cozy Glow. But again, this plays into what Cozy Glow is. A very smart, intelligent character that can see through a lot of things. And pretty much she saw through the distraction that the CMCs were trying to you know, give her or trying to use on her. So overall though, a very decent finale. So overall, besides all that uh, and everything, just a very decent finale. And it also, in a sense, kind of served somewhat like a sequel to not only the movie, but somewhat of a sequel to the season four finale. Because basically, it was not just introducing us to a new character that was doing a similar situation as to what Tyrek did, but it, but it also involved Tyrek because he says a line at the end of part one saying, in, uh, towards the end of part one saying, saying to the main six, saying to the main six and Spike, f because of the fact that they're stuck there in Tartarus without magic to get them out, he says, pity for you, sweet revenge for me. Because he's still, when he says sweet revenge, he's basically saying, hey, you guys brought this on yourself. You could have just let me do what I wanted to do, but you didn't. So, yeah, pretty much it was payback. Pretty much it was, it was payback. And, and overall though, the way, the way they got out, the way they were able to plan and strategize how to get out, or Twilight at least was, I thought was great. I mean, the fact that it took Pinkie Pie to be the one that says, Hey, we stay here. I can do this for all eternity. You know, the whole annoying of, you know, just being herself, just being Pinkie Pie. I mean, heck, even Twilight pretty much sarcastically says, Yeah, do you realize what's going to happen when all magic's here? And Turek's like, Yeah, you're stuck here. Yeah. You're going to be stuck here with me. And in Twilight, I love her reaction. She's like, she turns it around and says, exactly, you're going to be stuck here with us. And it's like, that's when Turag realizes, okay, maybe I didn't plan this out so well. But overall, besides that, just a terrific, well, I want, I'm not saying terrific, but a decent finale. Probably not one of the better ones, but a decent one. And like I said, um, in the live stream, Applejack, I think, had a great line towards the end when they teleported back. Because when Cozy Glow, after her defeat, if you will, um, tried to play up the innocent side again, tried to save face, Applejack's basically like, hey, you can cut the crap. We see through, we, it's like, you can cut the crap. We know what you're really about, and we know who you really are. Or thanks to your friend telling us what was going on. So, yeah, she had, I mean, like I said, Josh Scorcher said Rainbow Dash was on fire in the Season 7 finale. Applejack pretty much was the Rainbow Dash in that scene. So, overall, though, just a decent finale, and that's all I'm really going to say on it. So, hopefully this was a little bit more simplified, hopefully a lot more shorter. Uh, let me check the time here. Yeah, about a little bit more shorter, just a little under 20 minutes, so... Uh, just let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. And I will talk to you all later. God bless. Take care. And I am out.